Hi, it's Mr. Wassman, and today we are looking at Home Links 2.1, that's Unit 2, Lesson 1, Exploring Square Numbers. So let's go ahead and get started. And it says a square number is a number that can be written as the product of a number multiplied by itself. Product. That little uh, vocabulary word means the answer to a multiplication problem. For example, the square number... 9 can be written as 3 times 3. Fill in the missing factors and square numbers. Now, if a product is the answer to a multiplication problem, the factors are the numbers that you are multiplying together. So, for example, in this array up at the top, I have three rows, 1, 2, 3, and in each row they have three circles, 1, 2, 3. So I have a multiplication problem, 3 times 3 equals 9. So 3 times 3, those are my factors, and my square number, or product, is 9. So factors and product. So what we're going to be doing here on this first problem is filling in a table. So let's look at the completed problem that we have. 3 times 3 equals 9. It's right here. Now below 3 times 3 we have 4 times 4. So what do you suppose would uh, follow 4 times 4 if the previous pair of factors are 3 times 3? Well you guessed it, it would be 5 times 5. So that means that 5 times 5 must be 25. Now, I want to know what the square number or the uh, product of 4 times 4 is. Now, I know what 3 times 3 gives me, and I now know what 5 times 5 gives me. So my product for 4 times 4 must be somewhere between the range of 9 and 25. Now, again... I could just utilize an array. Now I can start by drawing the dots like so, but as you can tell it's a little tedious, right? And it's hard to get the rows straight. So let me show you a quicker way to draw a really easy array and I already kind of demonstrated it up here with my columns and rows. I drew intersecting lines. Now remembering from our previous unit, unit one, that points uh, just mark a position in space. And when two lines uh, intersect, they are usually identified with a point. So I can draw a really quick array by just drawing four lines, like so, and then draw four lines again intersecting all those places where the lines intersect, then I can just put my dots. It goes really quick. I know I've counted correctly. Sometimes when kids draw arrays, they lose count. But I can quickly see that I have four lines going across and four lines going up and down. Now in my array, four times four, I can just count the number of black dots or my intersecting points and as you can see there are 16. So 4 times 4 gives me a product of 16. Okay so fill out that uh, table using your deductive reasoning to figure out what factors would come before 3 times 3 and what factors would come after 5 times 5. Okay. So let's go ahead and skip down to 4. 4a. Four it says write an equation to describe each array. Now this is a fancy way of saying what is the multiplication problem that is represented by this picture. So there's a lot of dots in rows. Okay, But I can see pretty easily that there are four dots in each column. So I know that one of my factors is going to be four. So now I just have to count the, uh, the dots in each row, like so. 
One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, so I have nine dots in each row, and there are four rows, so that makes my problem four times nine. Okay, so four times nine is going to give me 36, because if I were to sit and count all those dots, that's what I would come up with. Now, I could count all the dots singularly, or I could just skip count by fours, because there's four in each column. So skip count with me. Four, eight, 12, 16, 20, 24, 28, 32, 36. There you go. Continue uh, by creating an equation or multiplication problem that uh, uh, explains what we're looking at and 4b and then it asks us to uh, tell which of these uh, arrays shows a square number. Well, if you can tell the difference between a square and a rectangle, that should be pretty easy. Okay, then finally, uh, down at the bottom, uh, there are a couple of rule-based uh, problems, input, output. So what you want to do here for number six is look at uh, the first two numbers, 32 and 45. Okay, 32 and 45. So those numbers increase by a certain amount. Now, to figure out what the rule is, we just have to figure out how, by how much are, did the first number increase compared to the second. And the way we do that is we subtract the second number minus the first, 45 minus 32. 5 minus 2 is 3. 4 minus 3 is 1. That gives us 13. Now, just to double check to make sure that that is the pattern, I would then take 45 and add 13 more to it to see if we get our next number in the pattern 58. Well, when I add 3 plus 5 together, that gives me 8. And of course, 10 plus 40 is 50. So that works. So my pattern, or my rule, is to add 13. So what you would do is then add 13 to 58. And then that would be your fourth number. And then you're going to add 13 more to this sum. And that will give you the fifth number, and so on and so forth. You're just going to add 13. Now, with this pattern over here, you do the same thing. It jumps from 89 to 115. So in order to figure out what the pattern is, we first have to figure out the difference between 115 minus 89. And then we would check to see if that's correct by taking that difference and adding it to 115 and see if that gives us 141. Okay? If you have questions about these problems, feel free to reach out to your math teacher. Otherwise, have a good day. Thanks.